This is the hunger capital of Nigeria. Everywhere you turn, there's a child with a plate begging for something to eat. But with everyone focused on the current cost of fuel and the exchange rate of Naira to dollar, it is easy to forget the most vulnerable people in the country, people who are getting the most destroyed by the realities of these high fuel prices and Naira's fall into a bottomless pit. These people aren't suffering from rich folks' problems like not being able to afford cement or that shiny new iPhone. No, for them, it's a battle for survival. Like, what do we eat today so we stay alive? In my quest to understand the ongoing hardship in Nigeria, I embarked on a tour of this northern community to find these poor Nigerians who seem to have been neglected by the government. I wanted to see how they are coping in these hard times and possibly offer a little help. My target location was this dangerous ghetto I had heard of. <laughs> And the task was to meet with locals, market sellers, and frustrated youths of the community. Their stories left me heartbroken. Now, wala, 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 wala. Well, let alone my my belly is empty. Did you want to go and get one day to numbu? Come on, plan where they kill kill people for for bush. They not to talk of that one. Before coming here, I had heard how dangerous it can be for strangers. So, to avoid losing my gadgets or worse still, a justice for Jude Bella hashtag on Twitter, I needed to find a local to serve as both our tour guide and interpreter. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Okay, so my name is Gabriel. My name is Solomon. Okay, Solomon, this is Jude Bella. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's roll. It was a bright sunny morning and the streets were already getting busy. After meeting up with Solomon, we drove to this plaza just by the corner where I met some young Nigerians struggling to keep their small businesses running. The prices that which we used to get commodities in the past is now twice, three times the price. So when you are getting it three times the price as at what you used to get it in the last administration, how do you sell? A lot of um, customers will not be able to afford these commodities. They're leaving them at the shop. So who is going to buy them when the economy is not striving? The phone now, for something like a PlayStation 3, I could get it from Lagos for the price of 50, 60,000. So how much is it selling now? 100,000. You buy it 100,000. So what do you sell now? Now to I people. sell at 130, 140. Mm. Because when you get it, you only have to transfer it, transport it down here. When you transport it down here, you still have to go and pick it. It's still another transport. And it, as the prices of commodities are going up, so the prices of transportation is also going up. This one before, we used to buy it in wholesale. We collect this as uh, 2,200 or 2,300 naira. Then we sell it. Uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, three five or three thousand, but now currently this phone is upgraded to eleven thousand naira. Wow, eleven thousand naira. So day before yesterday, I was with my mother in the house. She's asking me, "Are we are we using dollar or we are using naira?" I mm. said, "Mommy, I'm confused. I don't know if we are still using dollar." She now asks me again, hmm, "That." Okay, are we still under this white man mm. controlling us or what? This phone before hmm? yes. is 120 or 130,000 naira, but now it's 200,000 and we can't find cost anymore to buy phone. Honestly, with the current cost of fuel, it really is not easy. You will tell a customer the price from here to a certain distance and instead of paying or negotiating, they will just walk away and to be frank with you, I really do not enjoy that. The rise in fuel prices has no doubt affected the cost of transportation for everyone and this has led to the increase in prices of goods in the market. To put this in perspective, while still in the plaza, I needed to get a camera gear for my team from this store. 
only to find out that the price has increased by over 30% in the last month. But if the rising transportation cost is the real problem, how about the transport workers? How is their business faring? Luckily, I found a driver. I'm a driver. Okay. I'm also an ESCO of NURTW, National Union of Work Transport Workers. Okay. So, yes. I'm, as you see me, so. Yes. See my car, I'm loading from Nasarawa here, Marabangu, to Latvia. Okay. So, I'm going to Latvia. Everything very difficult. Mm. To find a passenger from here, Maraba to Latvia, you can spend two or three hours before you get loaded. From here to Lapia, we're supposed to collect four to five thousand. So passengers, they are very difficult to pay even three thousand. If you let passengers three thousand from uh, Maraba here to Lapia, nine passengers is making twenty-seven thousand. The fuel you can buy from here to Lapia is thirty thousand. So if you settle union, that twenty-seven thousand is not enough for you to buy fuel and to settle union to go Lapia. How much do you settle the union? It's three thousand. All the load is 27,000. Consumption of fuel from here to Lapia is 27,000. So how do you make profit? So we are making profit. A little we have when we are coming back from Lapia. That is the only profit. I was lost for words. Transport workers aren't having it any easier. I visited this fuel station to find out their prices. I wasn't allowed to film, but the prices were 690 naira per litre. Drivers who want to fill up their tanks will have to spend over 30,000 naira depending on the size of their tanks. So, how do they feed? I have a family. I have two children presently. And whatever I make, I send it back home to them. They stay back at Kaduna and honestly, presently, it's been very difficult. I make around 5,000 naira per day and from that money I still have to buy fuel. If one doesn't maintain the small amount of money you make per day, the whole thing will get exhausted. Even the money meant to be sent back home, it will get exhausted. So he makes total like 5,000 every day. Wow. They said they want to bring ton of food, some food from somewhere to share. Those, that food they want to bring, are you getting me? That food will not reach me and you. Government-sponsored palliatives have quickly turned into a new way of looting the national treasury in Nigeria, with the last administration claiming to have spent 500 billion naira annually all through Buhari's seven years on social investment programs. As I made my way into this food market, I couldn't help but wonder how that money could have reduced the prices of these foodstuffs if invested wisely. Uh, a bag of rice now. We are buying it in the market, in the company. The distributors were buying it now 65,000 naira. We sell it 67, 68. Then we have Gare. A bag of Gare today, we are buying Gare now. The white one, we are buying for 4,000 naira. The red one, we are buying 55,000 naira. Then beans today, we are buying beans today. Formerly, we are buying some 5,000, 80,000. Now it's 120,000 naira for bag. For a bag of beans today. So that's how all these things are going. The cattle of Maggi today is 220,500 naira. Formerly, it was 13,000 naira. So tomato, you see, like salt now. Salt has become something now. Formerly, a bag of salt is 3,000 something. Now it's 7,500. But salt is locally made now. It, it, that's what I'm saying. Everything, even the one made locally, the price has risen. That uh, you, the hand cannot touch them. That's we are. That's why we are. We are seeing now. Everything about food now has gone up. That hand cannot touch it now. If you go to buy something today, to go tomorrow, you see that the thing have increased, and there's no money you to add and buy again. So you just manage the one you have. As for increase now. So Everything just changed. Like this thing now, we are selling it 15 naira before now it's 100 naira. Look at this one now, it's 500. It's like, imagine they tell you this in 500, how will you feel? Our current situation for Maraba here now, even one pure water is 15 naira, just as this one. Our problem, not only the food price, even our tires now, Sharon tire, they're driving Sharon now, even our tire is around 60,000. 
the people are hungry and you can tell by the anger on these streets. I needed to find a way to help the few needy we met begging for arms under this hot sun. So I came back to this shop and we got some food stuff together. Nothing much, just something they can make and eat, at least to survive the day. When we got out to share what we bought, I was moved by the smiles on their faces, but nothing would prepare me for what was to come. From the senator, the minister, the house of reps, I know everything. I helped them get to where they are today. Here's a way I would dress. I will be able to enter into the house of a senator. If that is how they will continue in this country, then we would have to stand up. Riots, they can't stop us. Trucks on the road. As long as there is food inside, we will not let it pass. It was time to go visit this local community I had heard of. I wanted so much to meet with the locals and possibly talk with the area boys here. My team had warned me that things could turn ugly real quickly if we are not careful. But how much careful? There's only one way to find out. It was day two of my tour of this northern community. Considering our target for the day, we decided to only go with the gear needed. What is this place called? I'm going TV. But this is Maraba. Yeah, I see Maraba. So if there is a market here, what are people selling in the street? According to what I heard, yeah. that the place is too expensive for people to collect it. That the shop inside are too expensive. As we made our way to this local community, I couldn't help but notice angry faces on the road. I was becoming nervous. But something else was bugging my mind. Nigeria used to be hailed as the giant of Africa, a land with vast agricultural fields that grow almost all the food they consume. So how have the mighty fallen that the people are struggling to afford food? As I tried to process this thought, a scary voice screamed at my team from behind me. So we almost got bogged with just that. <laughs> wow, okay, we have some in front of us again, so we are going to be careful the way we approach them. Is just the camera well, right is there like is there like somebody we can talk to? Yeah, yeah, that will agree to talk to us and calm yeah, the people. people down and sort of. Okay. There are people that we can talk to. Some of the boys here wanted us to leave. But after appeasing a few calm heads, the boys agreed to talk to us instead. So there are a lot of people that are here and want to talk to us in this local community we came to here. It was intense. My name is Ibrahim Abu Bakar Garaba. My name is Abdurrahman Adam. So that's Abdul Hadi. Barista Muhammad Kabira Ajulu, the barrister of the native medicine of the Hausa people. They should have mercy on us and fix the current situation because you know 200 naira would get us food and drinking water, and we will be satisfied and drink our water peacefully. Now a meal of 500 naira is not even an issue of drinking such as water. It will be like you did not eat anything at all. This is a life that is currently extremely expensive. And look at us. We are struggling with unemployment. I am a electrician from Plateau State, just not. And I'm a electrician. But see where you see me now. It's not support to see me here, it's support to see me from my workshop. But work no day. You might ask what is our problem? The thing is that if we want to farm, we don't even have energy to do so anymore. And even if we force ourselves to go to the farm, they will come with guns and start killing us. Aside from the killings, the crops that are harvested, one person will carry one trillion naira, one billion naira, and go to one or two big markets and buy all the goods and store it in a warehouse. Nigeria no ballas. Well, I did. Those of us that are currently in the country, those idiots, what do they want us to do? They, the government, are supposed to look after us. Or do they want us to riot? Truly speaking, you see currently, those that run away from terrorist attacks are plenty. Formerly, I used to own a cola nut store. And the store was worth up to a million naira. But now, look at me and my family. How do you want me to feed them? Do you want us to go and steal? Farming is what we do. 
I did not grow up with business, but you see the business people in Nigeria, whatever hardship we are going with is them who are responsible for it. People came and started saying Jagaban. Which Jagaban? He thinks he is taking us forward. Meanwhile, he has already left us behind. They were shouting Jagaban, Jagaban. But as soon as he entered into the office, he left us behind. Now, because of all this, bad boys would increase on the streets because crime is fueled by hunger. You carry your hoe and go to the farm. They shoot you gun and they kill you. They do it to this one and then they do it to that one. They scatter them from the farm. The farm that we used to work, they already know it. Now they've turned these farms into bushes and forests. How do you expect us not to experience famine? And if you go to the hem of affairs, you will hear them saying, senators, ministers, house of reps, governors, some steal one trillion, some steal five trillion. How do you expect we the poor to survive? They want to finish us, we Nigerians. If that is how they will continue in this country, then we have to stand up. Riots, they cannot stop us. You see trucks on the road, as long as it is food inside, we would not let them pass. Anyone who has a shop worth over a million naira and then became poor again, then you know that there is a serious problem. They stole our cows. Even some don't know the whereabouts of their relatives because of kidnap. Many have fled because of terrorists. They killed my brother. They stole our properties. I never thought I would be this poor carrying this thing on my head. The government just came on and made everyone look at the hunger. I swear we have already taken a serious decision. They should be ready. We would take what belongs to us by force. We the poor ones, we have never done anything that will make the government uncomfortable. Since they are having no pity on us, we are supposed to storm the streets. Since all of us are hungry, we would start up a riot. Whatever it is, we will do it to make sure that we share the food for everyone. It doesn't matter who owns it. There are things I'm not supposed to tell you people. But even if I would tell you people, what I'm telling you now is that I am a political thug. Yes, we we are the PDP, the political thugs of Olishegun Obasanjo, Omar Musa Yoradua, Jonathan, and we are now the thugs of Buhari and Tinobu. Even here, since that is how it is in this Nasarawa. As long as we are all in this Nasarawa, by the grace of God, any truck, even if it's carrying Gary, we would not let it pass through here. We must fetch the Gary and give it to our family and friends. We will give it to our family and we too shall eat of it and be satisfied. They have taken us Nigerians as animals like we do not know what we are doing. If marketers and government do not put head together, I swear to God criminals will increase in Nigeria. Because I will not stay two days without food and see someone who has money eaten and I will leave him. For God's sake, if they should continue like this, I swear in the name of God, we will not enter 2025. The country will scatter. We left there to the local market and the frustration was the same. Spare water, 50 naira. Which can, which can woman be? The person get pity. People, Nigeria get pity for the poor people. Pure water, each one 15 naira. Abba. Granite, where would they buy 350, 450? Now one six, one seven. For God's sake, what did the person will not get anything? What did he go chop? I honestly didn't know what to feel. As I walked through the local market with my team, their voices kept replaying in my head. Obviously, these people have been pushed to the wall by the government and some are already considering crime as a means to survival. Not only are they unemployed, they are now battling with the reality of increasing food shortages. The question is, how much more before they take up arms and turn this neighborhood to a serious crime zone? Staying here and looking at the realities of these people was getting me depressed. Also, I was hungry, so we drove to a nearby restaurant to eat. But while at the restaurant, I noticed an advert for how to buy land with 1,000 naira daily. And so, I tried placing a call through. 